Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I am so glad you've come to this video because you're going to learn why feeds and speeds are so important to set up for your CNC router bits. We're going to talk about what happens if you do not set it up right. And by the time we're done with this video, you're going to have a whole new understanding of feeds and speeds and a whole lot more respect for your router bits. Also, by the time we're done, you're going to understand what to do to maintain the life of your router bit and hold up the cut quality for as long as you possibly can. So without further ado, let's dive right in and we are going to get into feeds, speeds, and heat. There you go. Let's go. Feeds and speeds are critical for you to have set up properly in your CNC router tool library because that will prevent heat buildup from getting into your tool and heat is the enemy of the tool. We're going to talk a lot more about why heat gets generated so you'll understand the importance of feeds and speeds. What I'm not going to do here is actually tell you what the different feeds and speeds for the different uh, router bits because that's way too much information and you'll glaze over really quick. But I will give you a table that has all the feeds and speeds down below in a link uh, you can get that if you buy the router bit set that I sell, then you'll get the table with it as well. So we're going to talk about what feed and speed is in the first place. Feed is the rate at which your router bit is moving through the wood as it's making a cut. Now feed would be in inches per minute or millimeters per second. That's the industry, the two industry standard, standards. Speed is the rate at which your router bit is turning, RPMs. The two together are very important because that sets you up for optimal life of the tool and the best finishes that you can get out of your material. So when feeds and speeds are off, you're going to have one of two things happen. If your feed rate, the speed at which it's moving through the material, is too high, it's going to break your router bit. If it's too low, you're going to start to build up heat in your router bit. And heat is the number one killer of router bits. So the primary reason for feeds and speeds is to get the best cut and give you the longest life out of your bit. So... When a router bit is cutting through the material, the material obviously does not want to let go. And so a router bit shears it away, and as a part of that, it's generating some heat. Now, the cleanest, the cleaner the shear gets, the less heat is generated. Again, that's based on feeds and speeds. So just keep that in your mind that everything I'm talking about is uh, where feeds and speeds come become handy. Now when a router bit is cutting and you're generating heat, there's three places the heat can go. It can go in all three places, but it can, there's three places. It either goes in the wood chips that are being cut away by the tool, by the router bit, the sawdust that's coming off. It can go into the material, as you've seen here, into the wood, or worse, the worst absolute worst case is it goes into the router bit itself and we're going to talk about ways that you can see that and I'll give you a perfect example right here of a router bit that was not set up for feeds and speeds. This is an eighth inch single flute straight flute and mill made of probably high speed steel yeah high speed steel I swear by carbide <clears throat> and I'll talk about that in a minute I'll talk about it many times. But you can see it's very discolored. It got a lot of heat dumped into it. And this router bit is no good anymore. So when you are cutting and you are starting to smell heat or smell burning material, then your router bit has probably seen the end of its life. And I'm going to show you this here with this particular one. Again, you can see it's very discolored. Let's get the light going on that better. And there's a cutting edge right there. 
Now, if I roll this back, you can start to see a little shiny area right there. That is telling me that this router bit is no good anymore unless I resharpen it, which I'm not going to because the molecular structure has changed so much in this metal that it's, it's too soft now. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But I want you to understand what I'm looking at here. So when you look at your router bits and see something like this, you know that you have come to a point where you're probably going to have to throw it away and get another one. I'm going to draw you a little picture of what you're seeing and what I'm seeing and why I know this is no good anymore. This router bit, if you look at the edge of it, you can see it's got kind of a half moon shape in there. And we're going to draw it out like that. Okay. And this is the cutting edge right here. Now the circular shape of this would be like this as it rotated around and then it would come down to the edge there. So this is ground in a way so that the, uh, the only spot that it's touching is the blade. But what has happened, let's do that half moon shape to the blade, is the material got so soft that, or so hot, that the crystal structure in the metal has broken down uh, quite a bit and made it softer. And that allowed the cutting edge to roll in a little bit. And so now what's happening is it is now rubbing back here on the back side of the cutting edge, which is what that shiny spot is. And so now all it's going to be doing is rubbing its way through the material. It's going to generate a lot of smoke. I'm going to smell it, which I probably did when I ran this thing. And the bit is no good anymore. Now, you can sharpen a bit by grinding it back, but that's, that takes some skill. Now, there's one other thing that will happen on your router bit when it gets too hot and soft is it'll do this. Let's just draw this one out. We'll just pretend this is the corner of your router bit right here, the cutting edge. And the router bit is rotating around like that. When the tip of your bit gets too hot and soft, it'll start to round out like that. And now you have a rounded area trying to cut out your material. And that generates a ton of heat. When it comes to expensive router bits, you want to catch that as soon as possible and find somebody that can resharpen it. You know, if you have a $40 router bit, then you want to recondition it as opposed to throwing it away and buying a new one if you can. That is what happens with virtually every bit when heat gets dumped into it. So, Another way you can tell, you can look at your material and you can see burn marks. So this is a piece of oak that was being surfaced by this surfacing bit right here. And you can see burn mark along here. And you can see heavy burn mark here. This is a bad sign for my tool. So if you are watching your router bit cut and you're starting to see burns like that, you really want to stop your machine and reset your feed rate. So what was happening on this tool was it was doing a great cut along the cutting path. But it was this this burn trail is actually the trail side of the tool. So it was running like this. So all the cut was taking place, it was done and now right back in this part of the cut it was rubbing and it got the wood hot enough that it started to burn. And that especially showed up here. Now, why did it show up so much more here than over here? It's because the grain direction is that way on this area, and the grain direction is shifted that way because of the knot. When you're seeing that, it's burning the wood, and it is dumping the majority of the heat into the, the router bit. And when that is happening, at the very sharp edge, you're quickly heating it up so much that it's going to start breaking down the crystal composition of the metal itself. Again, this is why I am such a proponent of carbide router bits, because 
they can handle so much more heat and they can handle a lot more abrasion. Now another way to tell if you are starting to generate too much heat is all wood has sap in it. It depends on the species as to how much sap is in it. But as you're cutting and you're starting to generate any amount of heat, that sap is starting to melt and it turns into a shellac, a very hard coating over something. And you will see it on your router bit. Now, if that's happening, you still got time to correct it. And this bull cutter is a really good example of that happening. That's the sap that is melted and rehardened much harder than it was as sap on the bottom of the tool. And here's what happens is the sap will build up so much that it's actually coming over or below the bottom surface of the cutting edge. And at that point, now you're starting to do get all your friction on the bottom of the tool as opposed to the cutting side edge of the tool. And that is going to do nothing but heat up the tool to uh, much faster than the cutting edge is going to heat up when, when it's uh, cutting. Much faster than this kind of cutting edge because you have a much broader surface that's rubbing on the metal, on the wood. When you see that, you want to get that off. And some of the ways you can get that off is if you're good enough with it is you can grind it off with the right kind of grinder. You can't use the standard grinding wheel in the shop, in the garage. You need to use a special grinder. You can maybe take a file to it. The thing you want to be careful about is you don't want to take the file to your sharp edge here. Now, I say that lightly because carbide is very hard. You can't file carbide. But you can fracture the edges of it. So that's why you just want to be careful, but you absolutely want to get that off. I don't know of any chemical compounds you can use to take it off. I've just learned to take it off in my techniques. A way that you can tell, too, if your router bit is a good router bit that's not going to build up heat fast or have a short, shorter lifespan is by feeling the cutting edge of the router. The cleaner the cutting edge, the less chance of heat buildup that you're going to have. Now I'm going to try to do a get a reflection here on this. So I want you to look at that surface right along there as if I can get it. Okay so you can see grind marks going back and forth that way. And the grind marks are very tight, very close together, almost imperceptible. If I run my finger down it, I can't feel it. And I run my finger around a corner or around a sharp cutting edge, and I can't feel any resistance. That's telling me it's a very smooth cutting edge. Whereas this cheap Chinese bit, where the cutting blade is probably made of high speed steel, when you look at that, look at the difference in the grind on that one versus this one uh, keeping the reflections in there that's very distinguishable and that's telling me that this is number one it's a looser grain metal number two they didn't use a good tool to sharpen it with and then you can run your finger around a cutting edge on this one and it's rough I mean it's not rough rough but I can feel it enough to know that this is not going to hold up well at all So now you've got an idea of why feeds and speeds are so important and also why heat is the killer and how to prevent that from building up. Now I can't stress enough that carbide is the way you want to go. If you are looking for router bits or trying to learn more about it, whatever, I do sell a complete set of eight router bits. They're all solid carbide. You will get a feeds and speeds table for it. I will also give you links for all the bits that are here, all the bits that are in my rack, and I won't give you a feeds and speeds table for the crap bits like this because they're throwaway bits. If this video is helpful, give me a thumbs up. Comment down below if you got something out of it or if there's something I missed and you know something about this stuff, put it in there for other people to read. This is Garrett, 
And I am so glad I was able to give you this information so you become a better CNCer.